For all its beauty and splendor, the wilderness can be a cruel teacher. Volcanoes stand as magnificent displays of nature's power, painting the landscape with a mix of beauty and danger. Their towering peaks and molten eruptions symbolize the raw force of the earth, shaping and reshaping the world around us. At the heart of these fiery giants lies a mesmerizing beauty. The sight of billowing clouds of ash against the sky, the fiery glow of lava cascading down slopes, and the unearthly landscapes they sculpt, these are nature's masterpieces in motion. Yet, their allure is paired with an unmistakable danger. Volcanoes command respect, their eruptions holding the potential for devastating consequences, altering ecosystems and impacting human lives profoundly. Please click the subscribe and like buttons. This is Outdoor Disasters. Kilauea, the majestic and ever active volcano nestled on the big island of Hawaii, embodies a mesmerizing blend of raw power and unyielding beauty. Its name translates to spewing or much spreading, a fitting description of its continuous activity that has shaped the island's landscape for millennia. This awe-inspiring force of nature is one of the world's most active volcanoes showcasing a spectacle that captures the imagination. Its eruptions, both fiery and effusive, have painted the earth with streams of molten lava, creating new land while altering the coastline with each breathtaking display. Kilauea's significance extends beyond its geological wonders. It carries spiritual and cultural importance to the Hawaiian people, who regard it as the home of Pele, the goddess of fire, lightning, wind, and volcanoes. Legends and stories intertwine with the volcanic eruptions, weaving a tapestry of mythology that honors the volcano's formidable power Scientists and researchers flock to Kilauea, drawn by its constant activity that offers a unique laboratory to study volcanic behavior and its impact on the environment. It stands as a living testament to the ever-evolving nature of our planet, providing valuable insights into the Earth's geological processes and the resilience of life in extreme conditions. It's a shield volcano, characterized by gentle sloping sides built by fluid lava flows. These effusive eruptions are less explosive compared to the explosive eruptions typical of stratovolcanoes. The volcano has been a major tourist attraction for decades. Visitors can explore the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, where they can witness the volcanic activity, hike through lava fields, and learn about the island's geology and native flora and fauna. The volcano is under constant monitoring by the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory and other scientific organizations. Monitoring helps predict eruptions, assess hazards, and protect nearby communities. Kilauea's continuous activity serves as a powerful reminder of the dynamic and ever-changing nature of our planet's geology, showcasing both the destructive power and creative force of volcanic activity. For Mike Benson, Chris Duddy, and Craig Hosking, their Kilauea flyover would be a nightmare. In November 1992, cameraman Mike Benson, passionate about aerial photography, relishes every moment of flying in a helicopter. He convinced his assistant, Chris Duddy, to join him for a shoot, capturing Kilauea's Puo event. Having collaborated on several projects, Mike felt Chris's presence would enhance their quest for the perfect shot. Their team included Craig Hosking, a highly experienced Hollywood pilot known for flying aircraft and helicopters for filming and stunt work. Mike's expertise in capturing shots, coupled with Chris's assistance, created a seamless synergy between them. During one memorable flight along the coastline, they encountered a spectacular sight, lava shooting into the ocean from a lava tube, creating a magnificent plume. This breathtaking scene unfolded while they were filming the climax of the Hollywood thriller Sliver, involving a helicopter appearing to descend into the volcano. According to local superstition, paying homage to Pele, the powerful Hawaiian goddess, involves dropping a bottle of gin into the volcano for safety. However, their attempt to make the offering encountered a hiccup due to turbulent air, causing the bottle to miss the volcano's cone. Despite this, Mike remained optimistic, believing the gesture would be understood. Chris Duddy peers out from the rear seat of a helicopter as it approaches an active volcano, taking in the picturesque Hawaiian landscape beneath. Overwhelmed by his luck, he can't help but express his disbelief. I can't believe I'm getting paid for this. While preparing for a crucial shot over the crater, tensions rose. The crew aimed to capture the perfect angle, 
leaning over the edge and feeling the intense heat as they maneuvered the camera. The first attempt fell short of expectations, prompting the need for another take. Flying over the volcano is pretty standard for Craig Hosking, who typically takes tourists around the rim. This trip, however, ventures into the crater itself, a task manageable even for a novice pilot. Yet the fumes present a serious danger, consisting of water vapor, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and hydrogen sulfide. Should a helicopter immerse too deeply in this mix, it risks engine stalling due to insufficient oxygen and potential damage to its inner workings. Craig is cautious, ensuring he steers clear of the toxic white cloud whenever he flies over Kilauea. The winds shift, and Craig notices the smoke descending further into the crater, potentially requiring a lower flight for a clearer shot. But with an impending storm, Craig aims to leave before the weather turns problematic. Suddenly, a gust redirects the toxic fumes toward the helicopter, engulfing it swiftly. Craig can't see, and he's inhaling sulfur dioxide that burns his throat and eyes. Chris and Mike cough alongside him. As he attempts to steer away, the engine sputters and dies due to lack of oxygen. The helicopter begins an uncontrolled descent, plummeting toward the ground. Craig knows restarting the engine is futile. His sole chance is a controlled descent by disengaging the engine from the main rotors to slow the fall like a falling leaf. Despite his efforts, the chopper spins out of control through the fog of fumes. Craig can't control the descent and could go straight into the molten lava vent. As they hurtle toward the rocky side of the crater, Chris shouts, but Craig's attempt to steer fails and the rotor blades snap against the jagged rocks. The chopper veers away, free falling until it crashes the men, strapped in their seats, were tossed about like rag dolls amid equipment smashing and metal bending. Silence follows the chaos. Craig assesses the situation. Although they've survived the crash and landed upright, they're surrounded by poisonous gas inside an active volcano, with no immediate rescue in sight. Following their harrowing helicopter crash, Mike, Chris, and Craig faced dire challenges within the volcano's crater. Confusion clouded their sense of location, unaware they were inside the crater's cone. Despite minor injuries, they attempted to assess each other's condition. Trapped amidst lethal lava pools and suffocating fog, a toxic gas mix, their urgent need for fresh air intensified. The acrid taste of the gas burned their lungs, propelling the realization that swift escape was vital. The nearby intense heat from the lava heightened the danger. The steam is so dense that Chris can barely discern his hand in front of him. Urgently, they need to flee the fumes to catch their breath. Exiting the chopper onto the rocky crater floor, Chris feels an intense wave of heat, wondering how close they are to the central lava pond. Amidst the thick steam, it's impossible to gauge, leading the way towards what seems farther from the lava's heat and fumes. Chris signals Craig and Mike to follow. They push on but pause to rest against the imposing crater wall. Despite the sulfur scent, they can breathe slightly better here. Chris peers up the steep crater wall, noticing cleaner air gusting in from above, offering a respite from the toxic gas. He proposes scaling the wall, which Craig and Mike both agreed was the best course of action. As they climb the rugged terrain, Chris leads, sensing a hint of encouragement. Yet his optimism fades when he realizes the climb steepens toward the rim. A grim realization dawns. The crater's incline becomes nearly vertical near the top. Despite the grim climb, staying at the bottom with the concentrated fumes isn't an option. Progressing upward, a loose rock tumbling past Mike warns them of the slope's danger. Chris eyes the rim, scouting for footholds, finding none. His attempt to scale the wall meets a dead end. Warning Craig and Mike, he retraces his steps and stumbles, realizing the peril of falling down the slope lined with volcanic rocks that could shred him. Trapped midway up the crater wall, Chris knows the dire situation. Craig, a distance below, struggles for air, while Mike, slightly higher, appears frozen. Craig alerts them to the lack of rescue awareness and returns to the chopper to send a mayday message despite the dangers of the noxious fumes and lack of oxygen. Craig's descent back to the chopper is fraught with suffocating sulfuric gas, pushing his physical limits. The dashboard lies in ruins, but the radio seems intact. He seizes the microphone, hoping for a sign of life, but the radio's silent. Craig knows he must repair it to send a distress signal. 
Desperate for a solution, he scavenges the helicopter for anything to power the radio. Chris's camera bag holds a 24-volt battery. As sulfuric gas racks his body, Craig rushes back to the chopper. He crafts makeshift wires to jumpstart the radio, managing to power it up. His elation is short-lived as his breathing gets harder. A voice responds on the radio, relief flooding Craig, though breathing becomes a Herculean task. The clock ticks as he wonders if help will arrive in time. Pilot Don Shearer rushes to the scene. Navigating through storm clouds, the sulfur-filled crater greets him. Filled with noxious fumes, visibility is minimal. Landing seems improbable. Despite rescue attempts by both air and ground teams, poor visibility and hazardous terrain thwarted their efforts. Desperation mounted as the rescuers struggled to navigate the treacherous landscape and dense fumes. In a courageous move, the rescue pilot descended into the crater, risking engine failure. Craig, clinging to consciousness, spotted the helicopter and summoned his last ounces of strength to get on board. Amidst near-zero visibility, the pilot navigated through the fog, battling to reach Craig, whose condition continued deteriorating. Craig sprints toward the sound of the chopper's blades, nearly stumbling on jagged rocks. He desperately calls for Mike and Chris, but there's no time to wait. With a final burst of energy, Craig reaches the chopper, yanked in by a park ranger, the pilot propelling them out of the danger zone. Safe within the chopper, Craig coughs, tasting sulfur in his throat, but relief floods him as they escape the toxic fumes. Gazing down, he's shocked by the intense whiteness of the crater, unable to discern any trace of his colleagues. Although Craig pleads to return for them, the worsening storm and zero visibility force a difficult decision. They'll have to wait until tomorrow for another attempt, leaving Craig fraught with guilt. Chris, stranded on a rocky ledge, calls out for Craig, receiving no response. Fearful thoughts of Craig succumbing to the fumes or abandoning them plague Chris's mind while Mike reassures him of an imminent rescue. Mike clings to a less noxious spot on the crater wall, shielding his mouth with his shirt to filter the fumes. The anticipated helicopter rescue was suddenly abandoned as the chopper's presence dwindled into nothingness. Within the volcano, plummeting temperatures threatened the duo with hypothermia. Gasping for breath in the freezing conditions, their throats constricted, making it difficult to speak or breathe properly. Dehydration added to their ordeal. Chris resorted to collecting moisture from the sulfuric air using a light meter. Each breath tasted vile. As darkness enveloped them, Chris resigned himself to the bleak possibility of never seeing a rescue party. Soaked, shivering, and uncertain about the stability of his perch, Chris prepared for a perilous night. The crushing realization hit that the rescue team's return would not happen that night, intensifying the despair. As the sun set, the air grew thinner, making it harder for them to stay awake. Mike struggled to keep his eyes open, seeking shelter under his sweatshirt. Amidst the terrifying landscape, Mike and Chris felt trapped, constantly aware of potential landslides or slips into the abyss. Their chances of survival felt bleak. Chris, in a despondent state, contemplated dire outcomes, even considering ending it all. Surviving a harrowing night inside the volcano, clinging to the unstable crater walls left them exhausted, dehydrated, and suffocating from toxic gases. Their hopes hung on the return of the rescue team. Mike offered encouragement, assuring Chris that help would arrive, though doubt crept into his own mind. Chris pulls his sweatshirt over his head, his body huddled as sundown approaches. Initially trying to find an escape route by climbing up, he finds himself trapped, unable to navigate up or down. Once hot, now he's cold and shivering from the rain. His eyes sting, his lungs burn from the toxic fumes, and he braces against the unstable environment, hearing the sounds of tumbling rocks and the distant magma flow. Peering down the crater's wall, Chris can't see through the steam but knows Mike is below, about 50 feet down. Chris and Mike must survive a night in one of the most inhospitable environments on Earth, inside of an active volcano. A cramp seizes Chris's leg as he struggles to maintain his position on the ledge, feeling the weight of his endurance wearing thin. Suddenly, Chris hears a new sound, a distant call that indicates rescuers are nearby. His heart leaps with hope, sharing the news with Mike. The rescue seems imminent, filling Chris with relief. Yet, the rescuer's response, indicating they'll return at dawn and will sporadically check on them, deflates Chris's hopes. He feels abandoned and questions how they can expect survival in such dire conditions. Cold and alone, 
he retreats into his sweatshirt, feeling vulnerable and isolated. Meanwhile, Laura Wiederman, a producer for the movie, urges authorities not to abandon the search, citing their inability to locate the survivors due to poor acoustics and visibility within the crater. Frustrated, she insists on continued efforts. Driven by her commitment to the safety of her crew, Laura is attempting to mount a rescue of her own. Despite the storm's severity, she's astounded by the delay in ensuring Chris and Mike's safety. Determined, she reaches for the phone to update the production team at the Paramount lot in Hollywood. On the line, a producer in Los Angeles shares unexpected news. A group of stuntmen involved in the film has proposed a plan to rescue Chris and Mike. Their idea involves running a cable across the rim to lower themselves into the crater and retrieve the stranded individuals. Now she must find a pilot willing to attempt the daring rescue. Mike Benson raises his head, feeling the reassuring warmth of the light on his face. With the morning's arrival, he remains alive. Above him, a faint whistle reaches his ears, followed by an answering one. He hopes it signals the imminent start of their rescue. Mike gazes up the wall towards his friend. We're getting out today, Chris. I have a feeling. Surveying his surroundings, the fumes seem to dissipate slightly from his vantage point, offering a sense of optimism. However, after an hour passes, frustration builds within Mike. Why is this rescue taking so long? Suddenly, Chris's voice pierces through the wind from above. Mike shifts his gaze to his left. About 40 feet away, a rope descends. Mike trails off, realizing it's too far out of reach. The rope momentarily rests against the rocks before vanishing out of sight. A few moments later, it descends again, this time 10 feet closer. Mike strains against the crater wall, stretching his arm as far as possible. Though close, it remains just beyond his grasp. I'm jumping for it. I can make it. Mike prepares to leap, but before he can act, the rope ascends back up the crater wall. No, 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 he cries in frustration. Despite reassurances from Chris, the rope doesn't return. Minutes turn into hours. Rain continues to fall, yet there is no sign of the rope's return. Hours have elapsed since they last glimpsed the rope. Chris senses their potential rescuers are gone. Gazing at the crater rim, a break in the storm allows sunlight to pierce the volcanic steam's thickness. Chris, with a cameraman's eye, observes the light's color and shadow length, realizing nightfall approaches. The thought of enduring another night crushes him, scouring the rocky wall for any route upward. A brief clarity in the haze offers him a view, but he sees nothing new until a ray of sunlight illuminates the wall. He spots a sequence of rocks that might serve as stepping stones, leading the final 100 feet to the crater's top. Mike, I think I found a way up. I'm going for it. Concerned about loose rocks, Mike cautions him, but Chris is determined to try rather than endure another night. Clinging to a large outcropping, Chris carefully ascends, making slow progress. As the rain intensifies and volcanic fumes swirl, obstructing his vision, he pushes upward, relentlessly climbing. The summit looms mere feet away, but as he reaches out for a rock, it breaks off. He ponders, contemplating his next move. In a moment of inspiration, he recognizes that his arms might serve as anchors. Though painful, using his arms to create leverage becomes his only option. Gritting his teeth, he pushes his arms into the loose volcanic rocks, feeling them puncture his skin. Agonizing but effective, he pulls himself up, inching closer to the crater's lip. With one final, excruciating effort, Chris manages to hoist himself over the rim, bleeding and gasping for breath. Lying on his back, wind howling, rain drenching him, Chris realizes he's escaped the volcano. Yet his thoughts immediately turned to Mike's safety. Spotting a long coil of rope nearby, left behind by the rescue workers, he attempts to lift it, but his strength, depleted after spending a day and a half in toxic fumes, fails him. Even if he threw the rope down, he knows he's too weak to pull Mike up. Determined to save his friend, Chris understands he must find help. Lost and drained, Chris trudges forward, hoping his steps lead toward the base camp. Colorful dots appear in the distance amidst the black landscape, orange safety cones marking the rescue worker's path. He spots a tent and staggers inside only to find it deserted. He searches desperately and finds water but can't swallow due to his swollen throat from sulfur exposure. Spotting an oxygen tank, he dons the mask, inhaling the refreshing air, his lungs gradually recovering. Suddenly, a sound. A park ranger's chopper appears through storm clouds. Chris waves frantically, catching their attention. 
The chopper lands and rangers rush to him, guiding Chris as exhaustion, pain, and toxic fumes overwhelm him. They carry him aboard as the chopper lifts, leaving behind the crater and Mike trapped within. Chris witnesses the bustling scene as the ranger helicopter lands near the production base camp. Astonished by the media frenzy surrounding the crash, he's unaware of the attention and massive rescue efforts. Overwhelmed, he's helped out, spotting Craig, the rescued pilot, and embraces him, relieved. Exhausted and frail, Chris urges to rescue Mike, sharing the mark spot, but weather and safety regulations thwart immediate action. Craig promises to organize a rescue, relying on Laura's coordination with skilled pilots. Chris, worried about Mike's plight, trusts Laura's efforts to save their friend. Meanwhile, Mike, still inside the crater, lost contact with Chris. Surviving a helicopter crash and spending a second night within the live volcano, Mike Benson believed his colleagues had perished. Despite two failed rescue attempts, a new helicopter pilot that producer Laura found would attempt to get Mike out. A familiar sound filled the air as the helicopter approached, its pilot waving enthusiastically from the cockpit. After enduring a second night within the crater, exhaustion clouds his senses, making him question whether this is real or a hallucination. Amidst the echoes against the crater walls and the veil of steam, the helicopter noise feels real. Mike spots an object emerging from the haze. It's a basket swinging on a cable. Recognizing it as a rescue basket, he acknowledges the helicopter's presence. Even if obscured by the steam, the swinging basket draws closer, a mere 15 feet away. Mike stretches out, striving to grasp it, yet it remains out of reach. A daunting realization dawns. He might need to leap for it. Peering down the crater wall, he calculates the significant drop onto sharp rocks below, a distance seemingly over 100 feet. Surviving the fall feels improbable. Fixating on the swinging basket, Mike decides it's now or never. He jumps from his rocky perch, hurtling into the open air, landing squarely in the basket. Gripping the net tightly, he swings amidst sulfur clouds, feeling the upward pull. Emerging from the steam, he glimpses the distant landscape below, the ominous Pu'u crater, the vast Pacific Ocean, and above him, the helicopter that becomes his savior. Eyes closed, he breathed in the fresh air, reflecting on his haunting visions from the previous night, and gazed back at the vast crater, his prison for two days. Initially convinced he was the sole survivor, Mike was overwhelmed to see his wife and then Chris and Craig, realizing they hadn't perished. He couldn't fathom Craig's survival. Despite prolonged exposure to toxic fumes, their hospital stay lasts only a few days without any permanent lung damage. Chris recalls tasting sulfur in his coughs for months afterward, a consequence of inhaling volcanic gas to an extent unprecedented in modern history. Doctors request they stay on the island for a week for further study. A week post-rescue, a cargo helicopter retrieves Craig's downed chopper from the crater, but the rotor, lost in the crash, remains unrecovered. Regrettably, the footage Chris and Mike shot for Sliver is lost. The film's climactic volcano scene, recreated using special effects and stock footage, tests poorly during advanced screenings. Despite filming for Sliver, Paramount altered the ending, eliminating any volcano scenes. This decision rendered Mike's efforts futile. Craig Hosking continued as a sought-after pilot in Hollywood, the volcanic incident lingering in his thoughts, shaping his perspective. Chris Duddy, rising in the film industry, became a director and producer, and the accident reshaped his outlook on life. The experience led Mike to value life more profoundly. Passionate about flying, Mike became a pilot himself, but was cautious about tempting fate. He declined further aerial photography over Kilauea, wary of being in a similar precarious situation again. Volcanoes create and destroy, crafting landscapes of striking contrasts and birthing new land while reshaping the very fabric of the earth. They captivate us with their mystique and stand as a testament to the remarkable power and ever-changing nature of our world, a reminder to appreciate both the breathtaking beauty and the formidable risks that coexist in our natural world. Being trapped inside a volcano is an extreme and dangerous situation. If you find yourself in such a circumstance, Look for any available pockets or crevices where you might find temporary shelter from the heat and gases. Stay as close to the ground as possible, where the air might be cooler and less toxic. Cover your mouth and nose with a cloth or clothing to reduce inhalation of ash and toxic gases. 
Wetting the cloth can help filter the air better, conserve your energy and fluids. If you have access to water, ration it wisely. Keep your body hydrated to the best of your ability. Try to make yourself visible or audible to rescuers. Use any available materials to create signals for help, such as waving clothing or using reflective objects to catch attention. Volcanic eruptions usually prompt emergency response teams. Stay put if moving further might put you in more danger. Rescuers will have the expertise and equipment to extract you safely. Ultimately, avoid entering dangerous areas or volcanically active zones if it's possible to prevent such situations. Crucial information so you can make it through an outdoor disaster. Thank you for watching. Want more outdoor disaster content? Check out these stories I believe you'll enjoy.